Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Daniele, for to share with us this uh, this moment. So uh, all is yours, wherever, whenever you want. Okay. Um, do we have the images? We can. Okay. Great. Yes. Okay. Right. That's perfect. So thank you, Javier, for inviting me, and uh, good uh, maybe good morning. I think I, I'm not sure. I am in Italy. For me, it's afternoon, but okay. Good day, let's say. So um, uh, let me start from uh, with. Uh, um, uh, can we go to the next, please? Uh, with a um, short, brief, uh, um, autobiographical. Uh, um, uh, description uh, uh, about uh, how I, I got here. Um, a few years ago, uh, in uh, 2017, next one, I published this book um, and uh, uh, about Mendes de Rocha. It was my second book on Mendes de Rocha. This was the first one. And uh, um, the second book was, uh, um, I, I continued uh, working on him because uh, there, there was something I still had to, uh, to, to, to understand. Um, this is the first book published in uh, between uh, 2013 and 2015, uh, next uh, uh, it depends on uh, the, the, the edition uh, in Italian or in English. Uh, and uh, um, to write this book, uh, I went to Brazil, of course, very many times. I went uh, and vi visited very many, uh, almost all, of, all, all his works. Uh, next one, please. Uh, uh, private and uh, public. Uh, um, um famous or not famous um next piece and uh, well and uh, built or under under construction um, um known or unknown this for for instance was an unknown uh, building by paulo mendes da rocha uh, and of course i spent very many Month, I think, uh, in uh, in the architect's office, uh, uh, opening all of the drawers, uh, looking at the drawings, um, uh, being curious, trying to understand the meaning of the very many strange uh, 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 or very strange objects you can find. Uh, in uh, his uh, office. Uh, next, please. Uh, and um, uh, and also the books you can find there. There are very many books. And uh, also I try to to read the, the annotation, the annotations in these books. Um, and um, okay, so the 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 result of uh, these. Uh, survey this research was the book and uh, um, in these books in this book uh, you can find uh, a few pages uh, about uh, a specific um, design uh, by, by Paolo Mendes da Rocha that is this proposal for the Montevideo Bay I call it a proposal and not design I'm not sure this is the best way to 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 describe it but uh, I mean, uh, just to be clear with you, um, I mean, uh, design for me is something that is quite well detailed. Uh, this is not a detailed design. This is not an actual design for me. Um, this is, a, a, there, there was a workshop in Montevideo in 1998, and in a couple of weeks, Paulo Mendes da Rocha developed this proposal together with a few students. So this is not an actual design. You can't find uh, um, technical drawings. You can't find even uh, a real um, precise definitions of uh, uh, all the parts of the bay. 
is something different. It's almost a, a manifesto through a design. And uh, uh, I, in my book, uh, you can see a few pages. We can go further. Uh, I spoke, uh, there are a few pages about uh, this, uh, uh, this proposal and uh, that had already been uh, uh, discussed in other, other publications. This is one. Uh, yeah, this is another one. So I'm not going to talk with you about a, an unknown design. It is known. Um, so there, there is nothing new from this point of view. Um, it was uh, even exposed uh, here in Vitoria in, a, in an exhibition, important exhibitions of Paolo Mendes de Rocha's works. Uh, here is an image. Uh, and also I, I curated uh, an exhibition in, in Milano about him. Uh, and uh, here also uh, you could uh, find uh, uh, some drawings and about uh, uh, this, uh, this project. So why am I speaking with you about this design? And why did I write a book about this design? Next. Uh, this, my, what I did is even more strange, is even stranger if you uh, take in account, in, into account that uh, we have uh, what we knew about uh, uh, this, um, this design is, uh, is not so much. Uh, we know little about it. Um, next, uh, we have uh, um, this uh, very schematical drawing made by the students in Montevideo in 1988. Uh, and this is quite unknown. I could find it in a, an ancient uh, um, uh, magazine published in Uruguay, ancient, I mean 1988, but never republished. Next. Uh, and then you have, uh, um, you have uh, this very important drawing, uh, this sketch. This sketch uh, now is in Paris at, at the Centre Pompidou. Um, this is one side, and the, in this side you can see the, the, the whole uh, bay uh, and uh, next, uh, in the other side, you can see a detail uh, next uh, that you can see better in this kind of drawings. This is a drawing, uh, a sketch, Parliament is the Russian made to me in this very uh, funny uh, piece of shit. Here you can read uh, Bolo di Chocolacci, uh, that is uh, chocolate uh, um, uh, well, something, <laughs> something, something to eat. Um, and uh, what it represents is uh, one of the most important and mysterious point of the design of the proposal. It is the theater. We are going to speak uh, very many times about it. Uh, next. Um, this is uh, a um, very schematical reconstruction of uh, Paolo Mendes de Rocha's idea uh, about the transformation of the bay, of the Montevideo Bay, here is the center of the city, and this is the city, how it is, the bay, especially, how it is now. And this is the, the proposal by Parliament is the Russia, with, uh, as you can see, a very um, wide and uh, um, ambitious reconfiguration of the whole bay of Montevideo. But... Uh, uh, if you search, if you look for information about uh, uh, urban problems, uh, streets, uh, um, uh, quarters, uh, um, you can find uh, a very few, very few material, very few informations. We know very little on this uh, proposal. Uh, and even uh, when he talks about uh, this proposal, he always talks about uh, one specific it item, as we will see, the theater. Further, please. So um, this is the, uh, the design, the proposal, and further, please. Uh, uh, but for me, um, so why did uh, I spend uh, so much time uh, um, um, uh, 
making research about this. Uh, for me, it became clear in a moment, in a certain moment, that uh, this the, the, this um, this uh, this proposal could be uh, an excuse, a pretext, we, we could say, a, an excuse to wonder about the role of Venice in Paolo Mendes de Rocha's imagination. This was my my aim, my actual aim, um, and uh, this could be strange for you, but I am sure that you will understand why Venice, uh, uh, why I, I, I felt uh, compelled in asking this, uh, uh, studying a design for a city in Latin America further. Um, if uh, you just have to read Paulo Mendes de Rocha's word, words. So what I did in a way is trying to um, to give, uh, uh, to take in account uh, his words. And uh, uh, one day I felt that these words were really, really very strange. Uh, once he talks about, uh, uh, he says that uh, his, um, his proposal gives quite a Venetian, I, I read uh, in English translations, uh, quite a Venetian perspective on the relation between man and nature. Well, okay, but uh, what does it mean um, with uh, uh, relation between man and nature? What is trying to say? Next. Um, in another text uh, written in uh, German, because it was published in, in, uh, uh, in Zurich uh, um, 15 years ago, he says, uh, and so a sort of water piazza would arise, the variant or the possibility of a Venice for the Latin America. So one more time, Mendes de Rocha himself talks about Venice, talking about a proposal for Montevideo. Next. Uh, a square water piazza in the little eccentric island, this is the island, in this new geography, a theater, learning from Venice. And maybe there, there is one more I can remember. Yes, uh, in the bay, in a magnificent eccentric position, as you can see many times, the words are almost the same. It repeats the same words talking about this, uh, this proposal. There is a little island which is transformed in the Venetian way in a theater. You could say that uh, this sentence was the start of my research, but uh, most of all was what uh, I found uh, really, uh, I could not understand what he meant. Uh, I mean, uh, next please, uh, I live in Venice and uh, here now I am in Venice and I can assure you that uh, in Venice there is no theater or, or better there are theaters but there is no island transformed uh, in a theater and uh, so what uh, what does it mean what thinking about uh, what does it mean for the Venetian way of transforming islands well uh, it means it, it seems uh, a mistake but uh, he repeated uh, this kind of uh, uh, sentences uh, so many times that uh, he cannot have made uh, the same mistake uh, 20 times. So what is he trying to say? What does he mean? Next, please. Well, uh, when I started uh, uh, looking, looking around, uh, I uh, suddenly uh, thought uh, uh, of uh, um, some uh, works uh, built in the past. For instance, in the 16th century, uh, there, there was the use of uh, um, building, constructing this so-called Teatri del Mondo. The Teatri del Mondo were um, uh, floating uh, uh, that uh, uh, used to be 
uh, made uh, um, when uh, um, stranger uh, important guests, just like uh, princes, dukes, or something like that, uh, arrived in Venice and uh, had to be celebrated. And uh, so th there was this tradition of uh, uh, floating theaters, but okay, floating theaters, theaters, sorry, doesn't mean uh, island transformed uh, in uh, in theaters. So, well, it may have something to do, but it's something different. So next, please. Uh, here, one more image. Um, uh, so, um, for uh, by now, uh, we cannot be satis really satisfied with the answer I tried to give. Um, and about the, the square piazza, well, this could be easier, maybe, because uh, uh, if you know Venice, uh, you know that uh, uh, in front of uh, San Marco, between San Marco and San Giorgio, next please, uh, there is an enormous water uh, surface uh, that uh, is can be considered as, as a square. Uh, yeah, you can see a very important celebration. Uh, next, please. Uh, and uh, even in recent times, uh, next, uh, it has been used uh, for uh, uh, special events, uh, just like the very famous uh, Pink Floyd concert in uh, 1989. But uh, one more time, one more time, we have no island transformed in the Venetian way in, uh, in a theater. Next. Um, and uh, uh, maybe uh, the most uh, famous uh, <laughs> happening uh, in uh, that took place in, the, in that place was uh, Aldo Rossi's Teatro del Mondo. You all know uh, this uh, incredible uh, uh, building uh, uh, designed by Aldo Rossi for the Biennale of uh, 79-80. Uh, and uh, here you, you, you can see a, a few images uh, and uh, of uh, the Teatro del Mondo that arrived and stayed, uh, as we are going to see, very next to the, the place of the ancient Teatro del Mondo. But one more time, we have no island transformed in the Venetian way in a theater. So we, we, we did not get uh, the point yet. This is for sure. Next, please. So uh, how can uh, what can we do? Um, the most uh, uh, similar uh, analogous um, proposal, this is a proposal too, uh, that uh, I know uh, is uh, a very strange and, and uh, almost unknown uh, proposal by uh, this uh, nobleman, uh, Venetian nobleman, uh, in uh, the middle of the 16th century, Alvise Cornaro. He proposed to build two artificial uh, islands, uh, as you can see, one uh, is, a, is a theater, uh, and the other one is, a, is an artificially uh, natural island with an artificial mountain. Um, this was a very strange uh, 16th century uh, design, next, uh, that of course was not built, uh, next. But uh, here we have uh, a very big problem. Did Mendes de Rocha know this design? And in this case, uh, are we sure that he would uh, um, recollect uh, this, uh, uh, this ancient uh, strange uh, uh, proposal? Um, let's stop and try another, another way. Um, and uh, I, well, I told you that uh, um, the, what I am doing, uh, in a way, this is an excuse to wonder about the, the role of Venice in Paolo Mendes de Rocha's imaginations. Maybe you are starting to understand why Venice, but, uh, or I mean, uh, the, the presence of Venice in Paolo Mendes de Rocha's imagination. But uh, let's start from this. Uh, what does Venice mean for him? Next. Um, because uh, I, if I spent uh, so much time to write this second book on Parliament of Russia, it is why 
I, I, I made a, a bet in a way that uh, in this way I could try to discover uh, Paolo Mendes de Rocha's imagination's cornerstone. So that uh, um, Venice, uh, uh, the theater, have something to do with something very deep in his imagination. Next. So, next, uh, we must ask ourselves uh, what is Venice, but uh, most of all, uh, which is uh, Paolo Mendes de Rocha's Venice? What does he think when he talks about Venice? Because Venice can be, as anything in this world, very many times. So let's go, let's try, read his our words about Venice. Next. Um, this is not Paolo Mendes de Rocha's Venice. Uh, we are sure about it. Uh, he's not interested, he told it very many times, about uh, the the vanish for the tourists, we could say. Um, uh, next. Um, um, and uh, here we have uh, a, a important statement about uh, what uh, he thinks about Venice. I, I read it. I, I find the example presented by Venice uh, particularly interesting. Not the Venice decanted by the beauty of its palaces, but seen as a new geography. If you can remember, we have already found this uh, new geography in relation to the, the theater. Its great beauty is exactly that which is revealed to us by this episode. The Venice Lagoon was the most inadvisable place possible to raise a city apart. It was necessary to map out new designs, configuring the canals, the perfect leveling on the small isles that dotted the water, the employment of techniques and experiments never before applied on such a grand scale. Later, in order to make the city's beauty stand out, the palaces were built as if by someone wishing to praise his own work. So what 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 does it what what does it what does he say? He says, well, I'm not interested in Venice's palaces, in the Palazzo Ducale, in Campos in Piazza San Marco, or in the most famous buildings, works, and, and so on. I am interested in what came before that. I mean the construction of a new geography. Next. Um, um, next, please. I cannot see. Okay. Um, oh, we can go further. Um, uh, this is images of uh, um, um, some places in the lagoon, uh, um, um, how more or less it was uh, 2000 years ago. And uh, this was the lagoon, he's trying to say Paolo Mendes de Rocha, it was this way. And uh, what we see now, this uh, is the consequence of uh, first and even most important uh, um, step, uh, the one that was uh, building the ground, constructing the ground. Next. Uh, um, next, please. Uh, another um, sentence uh, by Parliament is the Russia. Venice is not a complex, no, before. Venice is not a complex of palaces or buildings. First and not before. First and foremost, Venice is a sublime of the human will in relation to nature and in the present case against the hardships of nature. Um, the lagoon was a very complicated place full of mosquitoes uh, without ground, 
uh, anything was just uh, was just sandbanks over there. So and the Russian trying to say what is in is, is not what you see is what uh, has been done uh, to come to allow the construction of what you actual actually see next. Next, please. Um, in general, people uh, uh, think about Venice uh, as a big island uh, crossed by canals. Uh, next, uh, uh, this is, was not the origin of Venice. Uh, it was the the, the contrary. Uh, Venice is born uh, as a series of little islands uh, that. Uh, uh, went on growing and growing, uh, growing, growing until, uh, <coughs> sorry, next, until um, defining a, 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 an enormous and com apparently complete uh, uh, human fabric. But the history of Venice is the history of the transformation of uh, um, sandbanks poor little sandbanks in uh, ground where you can build a city and that city. Next. And so the, the most uh, secret but uh, most important uh, uh, element uh, that allows uh, anything is the pile, uh, because uh, any just the buildings, even the, the ground in Venice is uh, uh, on uh, pile foundations because uh, it is just sand uh, what is uh, below. So to in order to build anything, even a street, uh, you can uh, you have to put to put into the ground uh, thousands of uh, piles. Next. Um, next. Uh, so when you look at Venice, you always must consider what you don't see. It's just an iceberg in which uh, what you don't see is much more and much more important than uh, what, what uh, you actually see. Next. Um, and so uh, maybe now we are starting a little bit to understand something uh, uh, about the words uh, he talks about Venice, but also about uh, uh, his uh, whole uh, work. And uh, maybe you, you start to understand why, uh, for me, Venice could be so important. Uh, the image he has uh, of Venice could be so important. When he talks about, uh, when he says that architecture as, uh, as, uh, is its main uh, aim, as, as to have uh, as its main uh, aim, a planet which is inhabited and modified as a new nature, well, Venice is an example. Uh, Venice, just like for him, for instance, the Holland of the 16th, 17th century. So uh, places that uh, were very complicated, uh, very uh, hostile to men, that men had, in a way, to um, to transform the in uh, uh, habitable, uh, inhabitable uh, uh, places. Uh, next. Um, next, please. Um, and um, next, uh, even. Uh, uh, the main, uh, not before, but please. The main, uh, the, the, the point is that, uh, in his opinion, uh, um, this is an, an annotation I found uh, once in a book, but uh, uh, this is quite typical. If you know him, uh, he, he talks about it very many. It's typical. It's a typical uh, issue of conversation with him. Um, the fact that, uh, from his point of view, men, uh, here he says, uh, I translate, uh, we are the, the intelligent part of nature. Uh, the idea that uh, the the whole the role uh, the function of man uh, in uh, in this earth uh, is not uh, to remain uh, uh, 
uh, is to is this true is to is to transform nature um, um, nature nature uh, must be uh, transformed in order to become the idea place uh, where living next um, next please and uh, so maybe you now you can understand why he always talks about uh, um, ships next uh, airplanes next uh, or uh, he loves next please next uh, or he loves uh, uh, next uh, uh, drawing uh, kites why the kite the kite is the 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 symbol of this intelligence the kite is uh, is not uh, heavy but uh, is heavier than the air but uh, the, the the key the, the who uh, but uh, if you're able if you are able to make uh, your kite fly then you are intelligent then you are the intelligent part of nature because you are, you are able to use the wind so uh, it doesn't mean uh, to be to dominate the planet. This is not the point of uh, his works, but uh, of his words. But uh, to use uh, our knowledge in order to um, to make uh, uh, magic uh, uh, things, uh, just like uh, make uh, a kite fly. Next, please. Next, these are uh, so. Let's go back uh, to the start. Uh, uh, he was he talked about uh, when he was speaking uh, about uh, the Montevideo Bay, a little island which is transformed in the Venetian way in a theater. Well, it's not clear why a theater, but maybe it's clear why in the Venetian way. We have understood at least at least what it means for in the Venetian way. It means a transformation of the earth, of the ground, in order to make it habitable. Next. And so we have also understood what it means with, uh, when he said, quite a Venetian perspective on the relation between man and nature. And next and also when he talks about this new geography. So something maybe is clear, something still is unclear. Next. Uh, next. Uh, next. Uh, next. Next, next, please. Next. Next, sorry. Um, next, next. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, uh, just seen uh, some of his most famous uh, uh, works. Um, in a way, we could say that uh, uh, we can recognize something about what we are saying very different uh, works that has nothing that have nothing to do with Venice or with Montevideo, because in Paulo Mendes de Rocha's works, uh, um, the target is always to make visible human ability in transforming nature. So you have always this. And next, please. Um, next. Um, maybe there was one more no uh, and so the fact of uh, no no before it's okay yeah okay so the the ability of uh, showing uh, how uh, the, the building convey the structural road is just a part of something something bigger and most and more important that is uh, um always conceiving the building any building even a house a private house as a little step in a 
more in a broader, broader uh, process of uh, transforming nature. Next. Next. Um, so, um, this is very important because um, 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 and this is why uh, Venice is, is so important for, for him, because uh, uh, Venice is just, uh, in, this, in this sense, uh, an example. Um, um, if he speaks about Venice, uh, uh, talking about uh, a proposal for Montevideo, it is because uh, for him, uh, Venice is not a model, it's not something that has to be copied, but is an example. It is, uh, next please, uh, a paradigm. Uh, paradigm is a very interesting concept uh, in uh, as, as far as uh, it, uh, um, it uh, represents uh, an ideal uh, uh, solution that cannot be imitated because it's, it is not possible. Uh, but uh, it uh, um, it, um, <coughs> it it shows how it is possible and that it is possible. So Venice Venice is so important for Parliament of Russia because it is a paradigm. It cannot it cannot be simply used. It cannot be copied, but it shows that. Uh, such a transformation of nature uh, is uh, possible that you can uh, you can uh, go you occupy a terrible uh, awful lagoon full of mosquitoes uh, and uh, be able of be to build a city beautiful like venice uh, on uh, its uh, uh, sand banks so this is venice miracle but it is not a miracle this is something that needs uh, the intelligence the man as the intelligent part of nature next ne next please so um if venice is a paradigm you cannot copy as i told you but you can learn from Venice in a way. You can uh, um, next. Uh, so this, I, I show you just a little example that for me is very uh, stimulating. Uh, next, uh, um, I, I show you the, the pile uh, foundations typical in Venice. Uh, well, uh, something very is the Russia's that who built very many works in uh, in docks in ports in uh, uh, in cities uh, uh, next please uh, um, in the in the seaside uh, next uh, next please is that for him not before the one before is that for him uh, the, no, no, before, before, before? This one, thank you. Uh, for him, he um, just like if uh, the shape of uh, the, 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 the profile, the shape of the earth is not, uh, the, is not determined. Um, as you can see here, for instance, the building is uh, inside the water. This is quite typical in uh, uh, some of these architectures. And this is a way to say uh, the shape uh, of the ground uh, is, not, uh, uh, is not given. You can choose it, you can transform it, you can give uh, it uh, its uh, right shape next. And the, he has done it in some designs for uh, Vitoria, for uh, Lisbon, and uh, next, please. And uh, when he built uh, his first uh, big uh, uh, work in Europe, uh, it was the Museo dos Coches in Lisboa, next. He, I made uh, an interview with him uh, uh, talking about the design, and he, he repeated very many times uh, 
uh, uh, an expression in Portuguese that is ganhados do mar, and the, that is a now an old expression that is not very much used uh, in Portuguese. But uh, it, it told me, it explained to me that uh, uh, he was very uh, charmed by the place where he built uh, uh, this museum because uh, the ground where it was built uh, was, uh, and this, the meaning of this expression, it means uh, um, land uh, obtained, acquired, gained from the sea, this was sea, and uh, uh, put the ground had been put uh, in order to uh, fit uh, this area. And uh, so this building uh, was uh, in a way built uh, where once uh, were the sea, were, it was the sea. Next. And uh, next. Uh, so um, next, please. So uh, um, I hope uh, uh, something is clearer about uh, this uh, relation about uh, man and nature <coughs> for which Venice uh, is, for Paolo Mendes Rocha's view, from point of view, an example. Next. Um, and uh, maybe uh, it's clear why uh, in, he uh, he talks about Venice uh, uh, redefining uh, the shape of a lagoon, of, the, of a bay in the other part of, uh, the, of, of the planet. Uh, next. Um, and next. But what remains, uh, I think, uh, still mysterious, completely mysterious, is... Next, please. Next uh, is the theater. Which theater? Why he talks about uh, there is a little island, uh, this one, which is transformed in the Venetian way in a theater. If uh, in Venice we have no island transformed uh, in a theater. So what does he mean? Next, please. Next. So let's go to the fourth and the last part of my lecture. Uh, and that is a methodological reflection of about on my work and an attempt to give a very uh, possible, a possible uh, answer to this last uh, question. Um, next, please. Um, Aldo, Aldo Rossi's Teatro del Mondo uh, stayed, uh, next please, uh, in, uh, <coughs> next please, can you see, no, um, in this, uh, stayed in more or less the same area where Alvisa Cornaro uh, thought uh, of uh, building, constructing two artificial islands, uh, one of which was a theater. So, Teatro del Mondo, and at 100 meters of distance, uh, the uh, Alvisa Cornaro's uh, proposal for a theater, and uh, next. Uh, Next, please. And uh, all the and the square, the water square uh, in front of San Marco and San Giorgio, that is always the same place. Uh, and next. That was also the same place where the Teatro del Mondo in the 16th century used to arrive and uh, to um, be the, uh, the place of this 
of some very famous important spectacles next so the, in venice there is just one place uh, where very many histories that has to do that seem to have to do with our history meet in a way and uh, we are here we are in the most famous place place in venice palazzo ducale san giorgio here there is the library um next uh, the two very famous columns with uh, the lion and a saint that is uh, santo daro and uh, here it is the, the square here on the right uh, the place where aldo rossi's theater arrived here in the center the place where the renaissance theater del mondo used to arrive and uh, uh, also the same place where the Pink Floyd concert took place. This uh, enormous uh, square, water square in front of uh, Piazza San Marco. Uh, is this a coincidence uh, or has it something to do all this with Paolo Mendes de Rocha's proposal? Next. Uh, one day, uh, uh, I was, uh, next please. The lion in the top of one of these columns. And here we are. One day I was alone. Uh, it was uh, Sunday. I was alone in Paulo Mendes de Rocha's um, office. I had the key. And in a drawer that I had already opened, but uh, I don't know why I never, I, I had not found, I had not found uh, this uh, notebook. I found uh, this notebook. Uh, this is a notebook that uh, he clearly, next please, uh, both in Venice in uh, 2005, uh, he signed, uh, it was uh, October, next, and uh, he started to write something, uh, the page I have already shown to you, and then uh, he stopped. He never continued. So it is a um, quite a, a empty notebook where the the only uh, the only uh, words are the ones you are seeing now. Um, the drawing, the lion, uh, I have. Uh, uh, just shown to you, and uh, uh, a, a quotation, Memorie nella loro discontinuità storica, a name, Tafuri, and then some concepts about uh, Venice. Tafuri, Memorie nella loro discontinuità storica, Venezia. Um, and the image of the lion that stands uh, exactly in front of the old Teatro del Mondo and all of, the, all of this. Next, please. Tafuri. Tafuri is a, a very important name. Tafuri is a very important uh, historian of architecture. He's Italian. He is from Rome, but uh, uh, almost all of his uh, academic uh, career was in Venice, uh, and he was one of the main important uh, Western historic, uh, historians of architecture in the 20th, 20th century. And uh, he, he, he has written very many books uh, and articles and essays on Venice. And here, clearly, Paolo Mendes de Rocha is quoting a text by uh, Tafuri about Venice in the notebook, but also in the notation of uh, in other books, just like this one. Next, please. Um, the, the quotation I told you is taken from this book, um, but uh, next, uh, in this book, uh, we are not lucky because Tafuri is very important, could be very important for us because it was Tafuri who first wrote about Alvise Cornaro's proposal. Could be the uh, main element of uh, our discourse 
if we could show that Mendes de Rocha knew the forest books, uh, we could uh, uh, be sure that uh, at least uh, Mendes de Rocha could have known uh, Alvise Cornaro's proposal. But uh, here we have uh, a big problem because uh, Tafuri is very much, uh, very usually uh, quoted uh, or uh, cited by Paulo Mendes de Rocha. He has uh, other books. This is a book pa by Paulo Mendes de that Paulo Mendes de Rocha owns, uh, Project Utopia, next. Uh, this is a book that is in uh, his uh, office uh, and uh, he built uh, a little box to protect the book uh, next uh, and uh, in this book uh, he has made the drawing of of what of uh, a lion the same lion this that same lion in San Marco Square in front of the uh, square piazza uh, water piazza in front of the old Teatri del Mondo, of Aldo Rossi Stato del Mondo, and so on. But in this book, Tafuri doesn't speak about it. Next. Because the book in which Tafuri... Next, please. Next, please. Ah, yeah, let's go further because uh, it's too complicated. Next. Next, please. Next. Yeah. The book in which uh, uh, really Tafuri talks about uh, Alviso Cornaro is this book, uh, but uh, this book uh, is not uh, in Paolo Mendes de Rocha's office. So, so, so what? So, did he read uh, this book uh, and then, uh, I don't know, he lost it? Or maybe someone told about him, uh, about uh, that uh, proposal, and then uh, uh, we saw so we don't have to look for a book, uh, an existing book uh, in Paolo Mendes de Rocha's uh, office, because maybe he knows and uh, he doesn't have the book. Well, all of this is possible, uh, but uh, I can say that uh, he doesn't have this book. So next. Uh, um I think that we are in a quite uh, in quite a strange next uh next quite a strange situation because we have you have very many clues that say that Parliament of Russia could have known uh Tafuri's reconstruction of uh, Alvises de Cornaro's proposal, but we cannot prove this. So it can be, but uh, I am not sure. We cannot be sure that uh, things went this way. Uh, maybe this is a deception, but uh, uh, one day I understood that uh, uh, I was quite stupid in looking for a prove. Next, because uh, we are dealing with something that uh, cannot be proved. Uh, in uh, this notebook, uh, Paolo Mendes de Rocha quotes uh, some very interesting words by Manfredo Tafuri, Memorie nella loro discontinuità storica, that is, uh, memories in their historical gaps. The idea is the memory that uh, is not something continuous, it's something that uh, seems to disappear and then uh, after a time, it, uh, it, uh, it appears again, all in a sudden. Next. Um, and uh, because in a way we are dealing with something very, very complicated. It cannot be detected, that cannot be proved with actual proofs. We are dealing with imagination. We are dealing with, next please, uh, um, memory, private and public memory with imagination, with consciousness. So we are dealing with something that uh, uh, even if uh, I try to say it in a different way. Even if we knew, we, we, we were sure that Parliament de Russia 
read this book uh, well and so what does it mean uh, this will this will not be a demonstration because he could have read and uh, and uh, forgotten uh, or we, he could have read and uh, uh, remember without really remembering which book it was uh, so memory is something complicated uh, it, it, uh, it, it at least uh, a sort of memory that is not completely conscious and that is the the deepest one and the, the, it is the one we are expecting to find in such a case where something very deep in Paulo Mendes de Rocha's imagination is involved. Uh, the idea of transforming nature is the deepest, uh, in my opinion, focus of uh, his uh, thought. So here we are, we are facing something very complicated where experiences, um, recollections, imagination, all of this is very, in a very complicated way, if is melt is uh, you cannot uh, uh, separate something for something uh, different. Next, please. So uh, I told you that uh, there is a mythological issue in all of this. Uh, there is uh, there actually is. Uh, I did not show you uh, because it would have been uh, much more boring. Uh, all the um, philological analysis I did, uh, all the times I spoke with him, uh, all the books uh, I opened uh, just to find uh, the proof uh, or a, one more clue that he had uh, known, read, uh, spoken about uh, that book. Uh, so I did uh, all of this uh, and this is uh, something uh, uh, that you have to do. If you make history, you have to be as rigorous as you can. But, next please, but here you face something that uh, you cannot really detect. Because uh, we are in a case like this, we must accept, we must admit that much escapes us. There is something that you cannot detect. You can say that the most probable place where Paulo Mendes de Rocha could have find, uh, found a paradigm, we can say, for his paradigm, but, uh, well, if you, if you ask me to prove it, uh, I cannot. I am not able to do it. Next. So, so what? So why all of this? So why I am talking about you about this? Um, because uh, I think that, uh, well, I, I use this quotation uh, from uh, one of the most uh, famous uh, philosophical books in the 20th century, the Tractatus by Ludwig Wittgenstein, where he says, uh, it's one of the last sentences of the book, uh, he is uh, speaking about the reader of the book, the reader of the book. He must, so to speak, throw away the ladder after he has climbed up on it. So, dear reader, is saying uh, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, you have come with me until here. So now you, you can throw away what you have read because uh, no matters, that's not, that's not the point. The point is that now you are here. Next, please. And so I cannot prove the way how, next, please. Um, Mengs de Rocha got uh, uh, this idea, but uh, I am sure that uh, this idea helps us, helps us understanding helps us understand much better. Um, well, I am not sure. I find I I I um, I, I think that uh, this uh, helps us understand much better Mandis de Rocha's work uh, next, uh, and uh, if he does it also for you, and if it uh, uh, at least. Uh, uh, stimulate uh, your thought uh, next, uh, uh, this could be, in my opinion, enough. That's it. 
sorry for the presentation because uh, it was complicated. Well, uh, Daniele, thank you very much. I don't know how internet didn't invent applauses yet for, <laughs> <laughs> for our meeting, but it's very boring, no? It's something strange uh, happens at the end of uh, every lecture. So let's see uh, if you have a, a little time to see if somebody uh, ask something or com or some comments of uh, to just to just to to bring a participation for the audience do we have something Juaco? so uh, uh, maybe I, I i would like to to comment something you know where i'm going to go uh, uh, An idea. Uh, yes, uh, Paulo Mendes da Rocha is a, a South American architect, uh, uh, and I also want uh, about about you, 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 you had uh, written in the in, in the book. Um, and the the one of the, the the main point about geography, I want to bring another architect, Argentinian. Uh, he is um, uh, Rafael Iglesias. Um, you know, uh, there is a very famous phrase that he always. Uh, repeated uh, about uh, geography and history. You are a history professor, so uh, uh, he said uh, that uh, uh, talking about South American or uh, especially from the Rio de la Plata architects, uh, that uh, here, he said, here, the history is brief. So this is, uh, I'm not agree with this, but he always said See, that. Yeah. And uh, we are more uh, geographical than historical. Yeah. And I am agree, I'm agree with, with that. And, and also this presentation that you did shows how uh, an important architect uh, like Paulo Mendes da Rocha uh, thinks about the geography. So, uh, do you think that Europeans, Asians, Africans, and uh, also, I don't know, are also more uh, geographical than historical? Well, um, okay, uh, this, is very, this is a very difficult but interesting question, so <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, well, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, we could also almost say that uh, I, there is a Nico. Yes, my mic. Great. What's my my microphone? I'm going to. to okay. To... Thank you, thank you. Um, so we we could also the idea that uh, uh, Parliament of Russia Russia shares that uh, South America is uh, 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 is nature uh, and uh, Europe is history is almost a commonplace. I mean, it's nothing. It's not. Original idea. Very many architects, and not just architects, share this idea. And uh, I am not sure. I agree with you, uh, but uh, okay, let's accept it. Uh, I think that uh, in other, in uh, I, I I don't know about Africa. 
I can I can uh, I can try to answer your question speaking about Europe that I know I am Italian so I I, I can try to answer just a part of your question and uh, uh, I think that uh, um, um, there is a I I don't know the the, the best word to explain it but. Uh, uh, when I when I hear uh, Parliament is the Russia's uh, ideas about uh, uh, the intelligence of men, uh, the uh, the that his duty is to make a better world, uh, uh, transforming nature. I think at the books, uh, the novels by Jules Verne in, in the 19th century. He, I mean. Uh, uh, it is just an example, but I mean, uh, it is a very deeply modern culture. Uh, and uh, um, I think that Europe shared the same uh, idea of uh, uh, appropriating nature, but this idea now is much more weak. Uh, this is not uh, our um, our uh, attitude uh, with uh, nature. We have, we, we, we are, we are in the age of preservation. We are, we have fear to change things. In Rio de Janeiro, in the fifties, they used to destroy a, a hill and build with the ground of that hill, uh, the, 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 the ground of the airport. In Europe, we cannot do this anymore. But this is not better. I'm not saying that we are in a better condition. Uh, we, I am saying that uh, Parliament is the Russia's still share uh, uh, a culture where this kind of uh, brave uh, operations were uh, possible uh, as a thought, not uh, because we could do it, uh, but we don't think that we can do it. Uh, this this is not a matter of technology. This is a matter of what you consider possible and uh, uh, right in a way. So uh, I think that uh, e e you we Europeans have completely lost uh, the project, uh, the the idea of uh, making maybe big mistakes, but also uh, big risks, uh, but to make uh, big transformations. We we don't do it anymore. We have uh, we are much more uh, interested in uh, saving what we have uh, and uh, uh, step after step. Uh, so it's for me it's very interesting uh, um, speaking about Mendes de Rocha and uh, also uh, talking about him uh, with my Italian uh, European colleagues because. Uh, 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 his point of view is much different from ours, and uh, uh, I can understand it for you. It's not so distant, but for us, is is much more distant. Uh, so uh, the question of the point of view, the perspective in this case is very interesting because we are friends, but we are you have we are born in different continents, and so this this, this thing I, I've talked about. Uh, 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 is different from our different uh, perspectives. I find this very interesting. Uh, okay, maybe I, I don't know if I answered, but uh, <laughs> this is it. I cannot hear you now. Excuse me. No, I was with the, the microphone off. Well, uh, uh, you know, uh, another interesting thing is that we have students here uh, doing a thesis work. So you sh uh, show us uh, a genealogy of the imagination of Paulo Mendes da Rocha, but you also in, in another way, you show us your genealogy of how to, how to find uh, how to find a, a research uh, from yeah. from from one curious 
uh, project from Montevideo, from, from the Bay of Montevideo. So I don't know if there is, and there are many students that, uh, oh, uh, they have to, they have the opportunity to do a project or uh, do or, uh, theoretical, or the, or a theoretical uh, work for a thesis. So I don't know if there is uh, someone that one that wants to ask you something about how to how to uh, about the genealogy of a theoretical project no because uh, well let's uh, give uh, the opportunity to ask something but uh, they are shy. But, yes yes <laughs> Yes. So um, well, I'll, I will ask just as a okay. to get a conversation going. Hello. Um, hey. Very interesting lecture. Thank you very much um, for presenting. And maybe it's just a stupid question, but um, what is uh, <laughs> I think <it's> stupid? Just, uh, <laughs> it was not clear. Simply. Um, no, just um, curious. Yeah. What originally made you like curious of this? Um, to pursue this research, like what was your sort of initial thoughts and following? Did you have like a personal connection or was it just like something that you found personally interesting? That was all I was wondering. Uh, explain me better your question, please. I want to understand better what, what you want to, to understand. <laughs> um, I don't know. No, no, just, um, no just like what um, what things maybe led you down this line of inquiry, like okay. uh, initially. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, remember, I had already written the book, the main book. Uh, it's a 5,000 pages book. Uh, so I had uh, spent years uh, writing about Paulo Mendes da Rocha. And it is a book uh, whose title is, uh, I ate it, but uh, it was not my decision. Uh, uh, complete works, uh, something like that, you know? And uh, after writing the book, uh, I, I was not satisfied, not because of the book, but because uh, I thought that uh, I could try to focus just on what was uh, really important for me about Paolo Mendes da Rocha. So not uh, all of his uh, works, projects, uh, the whole career, and but uh, the the focus the um, the hurt we, we could say and uh, um, so this was uh, the aim the the end uh, but uh, to get there it was it was very complicated because for me this deepest focus in parliamentary Russian imagination is his idea of uh, nature as something that. Uh, needs to be transformed by man. But how to speak about something so abstract as this? I needed, uh, I am an historian of architecture, so I needed, uh, um, I don't know how to say, um, something uh, precise, some um, to, to, to follow. Uh, and uh, um, so the, the, the proposal for Montevideo was perfect because it allowed me to, to speak about Venice that I knew was the best way to speak about uh, uh, the relation between man and nature, etc. So it is a matriosco, the book. There is a, a, an investigation. The, the shape is the shape. The shape of the book, the, 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 the structure of the book is... It is an investigation book. Well, it is not so funny as an investigation book, maybe, but it is an investigation book. So clue, 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 you follow the clue. And the clue is the, the, the proposal for Montevideo. To the proposal of Montevideo, I had to uh, wonder about uh, Venice and uh, try to answer this question. I had to speak about uh, that question about uh, nature and man. So, um, uh, I already knew that I wanted to get there, but uh, I was looking a way to get there 
with uh, a um, definite ground. Uh, as, uh, as an historian, I, I cannot read uh, the history of uh, the, the history of uh, the Earth uh, in uh, 20 pages. Uh, I need uh, uh, to 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 limit the space to to the surface. Uh, and uh, so Montevideo, Venice, uh, uh, nature was uh, the, uh, the, the, the the my uh, actual structure, uh, logical structure. So it is a matrioska. You have uh, one book. Inside the book, you have a second book. Inside the second book, you have a third one. The third one is. Uh, uh, the, the first one is Montevideo, the second one is Venice, the third one is uh, nature. Uh, and you have to open the first to get the second, you have to open the second to get the third. Okay, so, no, thank you very much. <laughs> Another one wants to, to comment or to ask something. Well, Daniele, uh, I think uh, there is no more questions. So uh, we'd like to thank you very much. Oh, there is another Peter or... Yes. Hello, do, you want to, do you want to ask something? Yes, actually, I just wanted to ask if you could clarify. Okay. Uh, one of the quotes. Um, I didn't make a note of who it was, but it was about uh, once you've climbed the ladder that you you throw away yeah. the ladder. That seemed very interesting to me in terms of uh, pursuing research uh, and then how your research uh, has, a, has a legacy and may be interpreted in the future. Yeah. Um... Yeah, what who said this is not a historian. It was a philosopher, so maybe it's not the best example for. But uh, uh, because I want I meant uh, with that quotation that uh, uh, because uh, in a way uh, I didn't I was not able to prove what I wanted to prove, so it was a failure. Uh, my book, that from this point of view, it was a failure. If I wanted to prove, I did not do it. So it was a failure. I wanted to say that maybe that not, that, that's not the point, because it is a failure, but uh, while during the process, you have discovered many things, uh, and uh, sorry if I say it, but fuck the, the proof. This is not the main point. The point is that uh, what do you what do you have discovered and seen uh, during the process? So maybe the proof is not good, and you have to say it. You, you this is this is this is very important. You you, you cannot uh, uh, you cannot uh, 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 you cannot say a lie about this. But uh, um, um, the process uh, uh, has shown something. Uh, and so, even if uh, the the result is not what you were expecting, uh, well, uh, this doesn't mean that uh, what you have done uh, is uh, uh, meaningless or functionless. Uh, maybe it's something different than what you expected, uh, but uh, uh, it can uh, also be useful in a way. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. I would also like to ask a question, if possible. Yeah. Um, I, I heard you say two things, and maybe you could clarify that for me, because I heard you say um, men are the intelligent part of nature. Yeah. And also that now in Europe, um, there is a preservation of nature 
and that we do not really dare to change it. And I mean, yes, I, I live in Venice and I know that there is more focus on preservation, which I really can appreciate, but I'm from the Netherlands and there is no preservation at all. And we all destroy all the nature. So also that man would be the intelligent part of nature that I cannot recognize in the Netherlands, at least. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a good point. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's true that uh, nature in in uh, in uh, in Netherlands uh, is uh, completely artificial. So uh, you have no natural nature in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in in Netherlands and uh, almost all of. Europe, uh, even if uh, except for the Alps or some places like that, but uh, uh, the, the most wonderful uh, landscapes in Europe are not uh, natural, are human and natural because uh, the Tuscan uh, uh, landscape is not uh, like it was uh, 5,000 years ago, of course. So um, uh, when he talks about uh, the transformation, so I think maybe yeah. Your I think that yours is a very good question. He knows that uh, uh, Parliament of Russia knows that man is destroying nature. So this is the starting point. So what he is trying to say is not uh, is uh, the most stupid say thing that you can do. Knowing this is uh, uh, eating uh, organic sandwiches. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, trying to um, is not uh, you cannot you, what he says is not is uh, you cannot avoid uh, transforming the world. Uh, the only thing you can do is try to do it better than uh, we do. So Venice is an example not of uh, the possibility of uh, living in in the world we, without changing the world. This is stupid and impossible he says the only thing we can do is trying to do it well so taking venice as an example and not marghera as an example uh, they are at 10 kilometers of distance but they are a positive and a negative example in the same place so um i think that uh, um, um, maybe I should have said this because uh, uh, your point was very good. And uh, um, <clears throat> about uh, so uh, um, well, the, the history of Netherlands about transforming nature is a very, very strong, important one. When Parliamentus de Russia talks about Venice, he sometimes make comparisons with or with Holland. Netherlands, sorry, or with uh, uh, Kenzo Tangen's proposal for the Tokyo Bay. I don't know if you know that proposal. It has been yes. uh, made in uh, uh, late 50s. Uh, and uh, uh, it is one of the most radical designs, urban designs of that age. That was the age when he had uh, just uh, it was the first years of his career as an architect, so maybe it remained very strong in his memory because it was quite young. And uh, uh, maybe there is also a confusion between uh, this, this. He has never written a, a, a scientific uh, essay uh, trying to show that these uh, uh, cases are similar. Um, I, I'm talking about. Uh, imagination so he has never written about it yes he, he i mean uh, it, it is something that that uh, uh, get that you you understand talking with him in hours so you go you drink a a, a glass of wine and uh, when he speak about venice then he speak about netherlands so uh, it mm, um, the fact that in netherlands you don't have preservation I don't know. I don't know so well Holland. So, but uh, 
uh, even uh, the most famous uh, uh, architect by Netherland uh, has written a book uh, when where he, he talks about uh, the I, I'm speaking about Rincola's uh, preservation uh, as the uh, so I, I don't know about Holland Netherlands in particular I don't know but uh, um, when I show my students uh, uh, the the destruction of uh, hills uh, in Brazil uh, just to use uh, the, the the ground to to build uh, uh, islands. Uh, well, they remain uh, astonished, uh, and uh, I understand this. Uh, so maybe, well, I, when I answered uh, Javier, I, I don't like to say Europe is this and Latin America is that. Uh, this is always false. But I think that in comparison with, uh, uh, well, so with Palom one more thing, Parliament and Russia Iglesias are much older than we do. Than we are so there is also a question of generations they are there are two or three generations between them and us so if you make the sum of uh, different culture and different uh, uh, generations uh, i think that uh, um, there is a difference in sensibility that is still uh, strong it doesn't mean that uh, the culture of preservation arrived in Brazil. Now in Sao Paulo, they are trying to save horrible churches of the 60s. Uh, and uh, in Europe, we go on destroying the landscape and so on. So it is not a white against black contraposition. But I think that there is still some difference in attitude between uh, between us, uh, uh, what I think. But uh, thank you be because of your uh, questions. Yes, and thank you for your explanation. Okay, uh, somebody, somebody else wants to, to comment or to do some questions before we say goodbye to Daniele. Well, Daniele, I think it is enough. We are gonna let you rest something after this wonderful lecture. So thank you very much, my friend. Hope to see you soon and have Bye. a nice rest of the day. Okay. Ciao. Ciao, yeah. Thank you for the invitation one more time and uh, see you soon, I hope. I fear that it will, be, it will not be soon, but uh, I, I hope <laughs> at least. <Yes. laughs> Magari. Eh. Ciao Daniele, ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ci ciao. Sì. ciao. ciao.